Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Daily Baptist Bread Devotional. And today is Friday, March 27th, 2020, and we are continuing on the topic of Sacrifices That Please God, Part 4. And the verse in chapter and verse is Hebrews 13, 6b again. And again, we uh, read here, it says, For with such sacrifices... God is well pleased. And before I continue on, I would like to greet you, as I always do, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, as uh, John the Baptist proclaimed in the Bible. And um, so if you have not trusted him as your Savior yet, well, today is the day to do so. And just confess that you're a sinner, and that you've sinned against a holy God, and that you need a Savior. Amen. And call upon Jesus, and he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. All right, well, the author again today is uh, Rex Cobbs. Is that right? Yep, I'm going to make sure here. Yep, Rex Cobb uh, from Baptist Bible Translators in Bowie, Texas. Amen. So <clears throat> let's get started here. As we continue through these sacrifices that please God, Part 4, and I encourage you to go back and watch Parts 1 through 3 to get the entirety of this. Alright, so again, uh, it says here, For with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Hebrews 13, 16b. And he writes here, The second meaning of doing good is doing acts that are good. Right, so we should do acts that are good. And that's the second meaning of doing good. Uh, this usually involves others, yes, others, not self, stop being selfish, we need to um, take up our cross daily and deny self and um, get uh, out there and um, minister to others, amen? <clears throat> All right, so this usually involves others. We can easily name a hundred ways we could help our fellow man. We are told in Proverbs 3.27, <clears throat> Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Uh, Brother James tells us, uh, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And that's James 4.17. So again, uh, therefore... To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. James 4, 17. So, when we know to do good and we don't do it, it's a sin. Oh, ouch. <clears throat> oh boy. Alright. Well, continuing on here. If offering praise and thanksgiving, and doing good pleases God, then not doing so will displease him. Hmm. Yes, it sure will. What can you do today to please God? Yes, <laughs> let's ask ourselves what we can do today to please God. And uh, it's so funny how uh, these uh, devotionals go right along with what we're going through in the um, Christian character and action classes and course and uh, sermons. So if you check out Brother James Knox's uh, sermon last night on... Um, uh, things we can do every day uh, goes right, right along with this, so I encourage you to go and check that out. He uh, preached it last night, and it's on uh, the website at www.jameswknox.org, or you can go to the YouTube page by typing in James Knox Sermons. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, you can also look, look it up on uh, the Facebook page. Uh, they have a Facebook page also, uh, Bible Baptist Church. In Deland, Florida. So, again, what can you do today to please God? Hmm. Uh, sacrifices are costly. <laughs> yes, they are sometimes difficult, and they require some loss or discomfort on our part. Oh, yeah, they sure do, because it's uh, easy to do wrong, but it's uh, harder to do good. And it takes work to do good. <laughs> so let's try harder. Uh, whatever we know about sacrifice, we have learned from God. 
he made the first sacrifice in Genesis 3 when he killed some animals, uh, perhaps lambs. Well, we know they are lambs because uh tells later that uh, they um, were, uh, if you read Abel, I mean, how else would Abel have known which uh, type of animal to sacrifice unless he learned it from his father? Uh, I mean, Abel, yeah, learned it from his father, um, Adam. All right, and use their skins to cover the uh, nakedness of Adam and Eve. God's ultimate sacrifice occurred about 2,000 years ago when he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Amen. Romans 8.32 God put the sins of every sinner on his perfect spotless son and then poured out his wrath on Jesus. Why? All we like sheep, listen here closely, all we like sheep have gone astray. Even you, friend, if you think that you're good with God, well, you're not unless you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. Uh, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, verse 6. That is sacrifice. And that will wrap it up for today as we leave off. And we will continue in part five, the final part, tomorrow. So um, if you have not uh, given God the right sacrifice, which is uh, Jesus Christ, by calling upon him uh, to be your Savior, well, that's what it says uh, right here, that uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And that is... Uh, Isaiah 53, 6, and I encourage you to go read the entirety of Isaiah to find out about um, the prophesied Messiah, who is Jesus Christ. Um, so, hope you'll trust him today. And um, if you're saved already, well, today is the day to um, do something good for the Lord. And it, it's a lot of sacrifice to do good. And so, let's learn to do good. And, uh, amen. All right, well, that will do it for the devotional part, and now let us get into the psalm readings, uh, reading for today, and we'll be covering psalm, I believe we're in 10, 11, and 12, so, or, um, 110, I should say, not 10, 11, 12, 110, 111, and 112, so, let us, uh, get started here. And it says here in Psalm 110, if you have your Bible, please turn along with me. Or if you're not able to get to your Bible, like if you're driving or at work, you can just listen along and go back later and get this in its entirety. All right, this is a Psalm of David. And it says here, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So this is... Uh, God the Father speaking to God the Son uh, here. And the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Uh, he shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Psalm 111, <clears throat> praise ye the Lord, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. So are we praising the Lord with our whole heart? <clears throat> this is what we should do. Uh, in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. 
The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Amen for that. <laughs> so, and he's long-suffering too, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance by putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Amen. Uh, he hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are uh, verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Uh, remember that uh, that uh, you can only call God the Father holy and reverend because no man should be called reverend. So if you're calling a man reverend, well, this reverence goes straight to God, not to some man. So if uh, you know somebody that's a reverend or if you're a reverend and you're uh, um, calling yourself reverend, well, uh, God's the only one that's supposed to be reverenced. <clears throat> Uh, besides the husband, there's only one other, other person that should be revered, and that's uh, by uh, a wife uh, rever uh, reverencing her husband. But uh, God is to be reverenced, and no man is to be called holy or reverend or father. So uh, just remember that. So, amen. <clears throat> so holy and reverend is his name, God's name. All right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. He, his praise endureth forever. <clears throat> Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And so should we trust in the Lord every day and every moment. <clears throat> his heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Uh, the wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Mm. And there you have it. That will wrap up the psalm reading. And tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll be in Psalm 13. And we'll read 13, uh, verse, uh, Psalm 113, 114, and uh, 115. So, hope you'll come back for that. And tomorrow's devotional will be the last part of the sacrifices that please God. So I hope you'll come back for part five. And again, I encourage you to go back and watch all of these, uh, uh, this topic here on the sacrifices that please God and get it in entirety. And I'll try to post uh, up the devotional and so you can read it on your own time also. So again, if not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that's the first thing that is pleasing to the Lord, that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, and just admit that you're a sinner and you've sinned against a holy and righteous God, and that you need a Savior, and that Savior is not some pope or priest or any man for that matter, and you can't save yourself. It's not by any types of works of righteousness, because all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags to the Lord, and it's only by Jesus Christ, who is God manifest in the flesh, came down to this earth over 2,000 years ago, was born of a virgin, and lived a holy, sinless life, and uh, was tempted in all points like men are, except without sin. 
And then he went to that cross and laid down his life for you and for me. And he took it up again the third day according to scripture. So if you trust in him and him alone and what he did, he said on the cross, it is finished. That means that he finished the work that God wanted him to do. And God the Father was pleased with him and him alone. And so if you come to Jesus and believe on him, he will save your soul and wash away all your sin. Amen. All right. Well, hope you'll do that today, friend, if you have not done so already. And um, it takes a lot to uh, do good things. But again, that doesn't save your soul. But the Lord wants you to do things that are pleasing to him. And you can get in the Bible and study it out. And also, uh, like I said, Brother James Knox has uh, good sermons on Christian character that he's going through right now. And uh give you that uh, web address again. It's www.jameswnox.org or you can go to the YouTube channel and type in James Knox Sermons or Bible Baptist Church DeLand and uh, bring it up that way and you can watch all those sermons and hours and hours of sermons and uh, Revelation series that he's doing right now. So I encourage you to go watch some of those also. Amen. All right. Well, till next time. May the Lord richly bless you, and have a great and wonderful rest of your day. And I'll be back here, Lord willing, later to give you the daily Bible reading as we start in 1 Samuel, reading the first four chapters. So, hope you'll come back later for that. Amen. And uh, if you know somebody that doesn't have Facebook and would like to watch these videos, you can share them uh, with them. I have a YouTube page, and just type in my name, Scott Messenger, or Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting. And also, I uh, encourage you to check out some other brothers in Christ that have their own uh, YouTube channels. And that's Brother Ed Worth, and he's got KJV Bible Scope. And he does Q&As every Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And so you can check out those. He uh, does them live on YouTube or on Facebook, and then he posts them on YouTube for people to watch later. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask, well, he's the man to answer your questions. Amen. Him and Brother Justin, they do a pretty good job on uh, studying it out and got lots of notes. And so I encourage you, if you have questions, uh, to go seek them out and on their Q&A that they do every Monday night. And uh, hope that would be a help and a blessing to you. Amen. All right. Well, I'll wrap it up for right now. And Lord willing, back later on to give you the Bible reading. Amen. All right. Well, this is Brother Scott signing off. So till next time, bye-bye for now. Jesus saves. Amen.